Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, hey, Bo, Bo Steiner. Good morning, Good everyone. Morning. Welcome, welcome to the uh, the first of four uh, what we call Asian American Exam Network COVID nineteen Asian American Business Advocacy Seminar. Uh, we're going to do one today and every two weeks. And I want to welcome you and uh, thanks for taking the time to share with us question on your mind. Today, we're going to feature Mr. Robert Steiner from SBA. But I want to begin by telling a little more about uh, what we are trying to do here with uh, Asian American XF Network. And some of you might know me, uh, George Moy, former U.S. Department of Commerce Minority Business Development Agency. Yes, I have retired and I'm not coming back. But I have since then <laughs> started a uh, small consulting firm uh, doing a lot of uh, international business development. In fact, our launch was supposed to be April 3rd of this year. And as many of you, uh, we have delayed the launch and actually rethink our strategy on business. But in the meantime, we have uh, successfully gathered almost 20 uh, consultants doing different type of work. And one of them is actually on the call, Jenny, Low, who is working to support the Asian American uh, community by working with National ACE, which you'll hear from Chile in a minute. But for this, um, for this crisis situation, the Asian American Excel Network, which is an informal group, and we've been around for about, say, 10 years now. And what we try to do is bring Asian American Executive together, along with what we call the Asian American Advocate, to talk about how we support each other and also how we support the community. At this moment in time, we, we felt like we want to make sure we do our piece in helping the Asian American business in need. And therefore, we have collected a lot of uh, information and looking to help, uh, is this a key prayer, Small Business Administration. We talked to our friend Bo Steiner. We were going to do something locally uh, to see how we could get Bo uh, outreach to the Asian community. But the more we talk about it, the more we talk about how we could engage national organizations who could have information shared from both to be able to get to the whole community in the network. Therefore, we have enlisted National ACE, and you heard from Ms. Chilling Tong, my friend and uh, mentor for many years, who will be uh, taking advantage of National ACE National Network. And many of you are from that network today. So the intent for us, the Asian American Exec Network, is really be a conduit, a messenger, and we have successfully gathered quite a few collaborators uh, in the National Ace. We have in Chicago, the Asian Coalition of Chicago, AACC, the um, Chinese Mutual A. We also have uh, Chicago Asian Network, and um, recently I have enlisted the uh, Allstate uh, employee group to help try to put a structure and a process in place so we do a more sustainable uh, uh, way of helping the small business using a little more uh, structure approach. So I'm happy to, to report that Maria is helping me put that structure in place and we'll put it together. And it's looking more and more like it's not a one-time thing is uh, we have to provide a sustainable service over a period of time. And those services very quickly to let you know what they are. We're looking to put together a research team to bring the latest information that could communicate through a communication team with support for an in-language team. And also we're looking at how to gather uh, Asian American business who you need, who need a little additional support beyond what they hear from uh, Bo and the government agency. And we actually around here with some banking experience uh, so that we could help them solve for some of those questions that they might have. And then more importantly, we want to get the information structure and deliver to you. And um, one of the speaker today and the organizer of webinar is Mr. Anson Wu, also a good friend. And um, we'll be doing a serious seminar to uh, get the most updated information to you. With that said, um, one of us set some ground rules for what we're going to do today. Uh, basically, we have a very simple agenda. After I done talking, uh, I will go pass it on to my good friend Chiling Tong, who will share with you 
basically what's happening with the, at the national level, what National ACE is doing. And also I'll pass on to uh, Mr. Ensign Wu, who's gonna talk a little bit about what he's plans out for a future seminar. And then the, the wax star and the, uh, the key speaker is Mr. Robert Steiner. I call him Bo, but don't call him Bo, he might get upset with you. I call him Bo. And he's gonna share with you what's the official uh, SBA uh, latest information as of 10 o'clock today, or 11 o'clock today in Central Time. Then we're gonna go into a, what we call a, just Q&A. Wanna, wanna hear what's on your mind? And also, um, uh, I do know a lot of people, a lot of questions in their mind, but what we wanna do is uh, somewhat put a structure in place. And many of you have submitted your question. Uh, our moderator, Anson Wu, has them. And he'll ask questions if he has them answered by Bo. And then, but in real time, you can send in your questions through the chat. And Anson will run in the chat, make sure your question answer. If they're not answered, we'll make sure we get the message out to you through the email of potential audio answers. With that, I'm going to do my good friend and uh, my mentor for the last 10 years when I was in DC, Ms. Chilling Tom, the National Ace CEO and President. Chilling, you got it. Hi, George. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Great. I'm in Washington, DC. I'm the President of the National Ace Asian Pacific Islander Chamber of Commerce and Entrepreneurship. We're a nonprofit organization. We represent the voice of AAPI business community and uh, advocates for AAPI entrepreneurs. Now, uh, uh, now we have about 2 million AAPI business owners, generate about $700 billion revenue. Uh, by 2020, uh, we expect our purchasing power will be 1 trillion. So I feel our group has accomplished a lot uh, in this country. And we have about 40 affiliate partners throughout the U.S., uh, like George uh, and also Asian Network, and also uh, uh, like California Asian Chamber, Michigan, Houston, across the nation. Um, during this very difficult time, we focus on helping AAPI business owner to overcome the business challenges and to recover negative impact on their business. Uh, many of the AAPI businesses are having to shut down and lay off workers. For example, one of our leaders for Next Gen, he is the co-founder of Boba Guys and Andrew Chow, and he has to testify in front of a, a house small business community committee. He has to close down about 17 stores and lay off about 400 workers. And we have heard many, many sad stories and they just cannot survive the business. Uh, we had a, a webinar yesterday and uh, uh, for the uh, loan application, 50% of the applicants said that they were just not able to finish the loan application. So they have a lot of questions. And uh, among the survey we sent out, 20% small business owners said they probably need to close down their business within a week if they cannot get the cash this week. So I, I think this is a very, very critical moment. And uh, uh, so we are focused on providing input and policy recommendations to the disaster recovery and the support packages. We are fighting for the small business. We are fighting for the AAPI business community. Um, we have uh, worked closely uh, with uh, uh, Congresswoman Judy Chu and also the KPAC members. Uh, we have advocate on Capitol Hill and uh, uh, we also work with administration and federal government agencies such as MBDA, a White House initiative on Asian American Pacific Islander and uh, SBA. Uh, we are just very, very appreciate uh, George's arrangement in order to make this webinar work because the SBA uh, officers, senior officer and all the business specialists, they are just so busy because they have to deal all the demands from all the uh, loan applicants. So, um, but uh, we are, um, you know, there for you. Uh, we want to make sure AAPI business impact by COVID-19 has accurate information 
and guidelines to gain access to the disaster recovery funds. Uh, most importantly, uh, we just recently uh, launched a very, very simple website with different languages, uh, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and Thai. And we also will conduct uh, different uh, webinars through all the United States and with different languages, primarily focused on economic injury and disaster loan. So you can go to our website, nationalace.org, or smallbusiness.org in order to uh, check the information. So we'll update the uh, federal resources guy uh, from time to time. And uh, we just uh, uh, really want to uh, make your business survive during this uh, uh, difficult time. Together, we can overcome this tough situation. Now I would like to have Anson uh, to help us uh, to, to be the next speaker. I want to uh, thank Anson for his volunteer work to help for the future webinars and he's primarily focused on uh, marketing and to let uh, uh, you know all the AAPS small business know what's the federal resources available. Anson. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for letting us know about AACE2. Um, Hey everybody, my name is Anson Wu. Um, I have been a, a long-term member at the Asian American uh, Executive Network. Um, I'm, I'm a huge advocate for Asian American business owners and entrepreneurs. Uh, so I will be a moderator for this event, as well as future webinars on this platform. So welcome everybody. Um, my day job is I'm with a, a brand called Gray. Gray is a um, hangout place, a hub for entrepreneurs, angel investors, business owners um, to exchange ideas, to bounce ideas, and to really meet each other online, also in person. So if you guys want to learn more about it, you can go to discovergrade.com. But uh, no further ado, I think our rock star today is our keynote speaker, Robert Steiner. Robert Steiner is the Illinois District Director of the Small Business Administration. Robert, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep. Hey, Robert, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Good. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. No, I'm pleasure to be right here. Now, you're really popular right now, and I really appreciate you spending time with us here today. So, um, so I, I want to keep keep the screen back to you and uh, do you want to share your presentation? How do you want to start? Yeah, sure. I think it might help just to, if I can uh, share my presentation, just kind of run through the, the kind of key programs that are, that the SBA is providing for small business would be, I think, helpful just to give an overview. But, you know, I'm going to keep it brief because I really want to get to people's questions. I think that's where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. So, uh, I will, without further ado, get into it. I'll, I, uh, I won't take a lot of time, but we'll get the key points on SBA's programs that I think folks are interested in right now. Uh, specifically, want to touch on the Paycheck Protection Program, SBA Debt Relief, and SBA Express Bridge Loans. So probably the biggest program that you all heard of and I think everybody's focused on is the Paycheck Protection Program. This program was funded up at $349 billion to provide assistance to small business owners and nonprofits to help both the small business owner and their employees uh, through this difficult time. Basically, these are up to $10 million forgivable loans uh, as defined by average monthly prior year payroll, which if the business owner uses from the proceeds of that loan, at least 75% of the proceeds for payroll and payroll expenses, that loan is forgiven. Let me say that again. That loan is forgiven, it means it goes away. Uh, loan payments will be deferred for six months. It's a two year term, 1% interest rate. But I think generally speaking, the intent of the loan is that uh, people are keeping their employees on board so making sure that their full-time headcount stays consistent and that they're using their, their loan for that payroll and payroll expenses. 
Uh, who's eligible? So basically it is most small businesses that have 500 or fewer employees, uh, private nonprofit organizations, including uh, 501c3, 501c19s. And, uh, and then there is a caveat. So normally SBA's programs rely on um, there's certain affiliation rules. So my business has 300 employees, but another business has 500 employees uh, that I own. You know, you look at the aggregate number of employees. But for the hospitality and food industry, they've relaxed some of those affiliation standards so that uh, businesses with more than one location could be eligible for the PPP program at the store and location level if, if, if the store employs less than 500 workers. So that can mean each store location is eligible. That's a big deal uh, for a lot of our restaurants, uh, retail outlets who are suffering through this um, challenging time. As I mentioned, two-year term, uh, key element here to the program. This is a loan program that where you apply through private sector or other lenders that are approved to participate in the program. So you're not coming to SBA, you're going to your bank of record or some other lender that you identify who's supporting the program. Right off the bat, banks that were 7A lenders, which is a conventional SBA loan program, federally insured depository institutions, federally insured credit unions, farm credit system institutions were eligible to participate right off the bat. However, the program is open to other lenders, both non, both bank and non-bank lenders, to participate and provide these loans uh, to small businesses and nonprofits. So, the network of of lenders who are supporting the program is expanding uh, as we speak. We're take we've been taking applications uh, since last Friday, and the number just continues to grow. This program, lenders began accepting loan applications on April 3rd for businesses um, and uh, nonprofits. Application for independent contractors. So that's a key point too. Not only are businesses and nonprofits of basically all sizes, but it includes those that are self-employed and or 1099 private con uh, 1099 contractors. So important to note that they are also eligible, eligible to apply. They can begin applying as of April 10th, and applications will be taken through June 30th of 2020. So program started last Friday. Uh, individuals, um, I'm sorry, self-employed and contractors can start applying this Friday, April 10th, and the program application period ends on June 30th. Other eligibility criteria include that you must have been in business as of February 15th and had some kind of uh, payroll expense. That can include your own payroll if you're a sole proprietor or something of that nature. Are you sole proprietor and then you have 1099, so keep that in mind. So the application process, what are we asking for from you? You have to fill out the application. It's a two-page application where you are, number one, attesting to your monthly average monthly payroll from the prior year that could be the last 12 months it could be your 2019 there's a lot of detail different ways that you can measure your average monthly payroll um, also note that payroll includes both cash compensation as well as other non-cash contributions so that could be health care uh, sick leave other things that you have to pay out as part of your payroll expenditures when you go to the bank to apply or the lender to apply, they're gonna want some records that show what your payroll numbers were. So that could be your payroll records from your accounting system. It could be the W-2s that you paid off um, or that demonstrate what your payroll costs were. Uh, so you, know, you wanna collect that information prior or while you're getting ready to go to the bank or lender just to make sure you've got it and you're ready to go. On the slide right now, you'll see that it's got a whole outline of how those calculations are made. Just something to consider as you look at how you're gonna approach this. Um, 
note that any compensation over cash compensation over $100,000 is discounted from the payroll calculation. So this is on the front end to determine what your payroll is. And uh, that is the, any pay uh, cash compensation over $100,000 is, is, is excluded. All right, so let's say you go to the bank, they approve your loan, uh, on the back end, you're dispersed the funds. What can you use those funds for? You can use them for payroll costs, costs related to continuation of group health benefits, paid sick medical family leave, insurance premiums, other payroll expenses. Again, that list is clearly outlined in the final rule, which you can find at SBA's website. Um, you, but you can also use the, the loan to pay for mortgage interest payments, rent payments, utility payments interest payments on any other debt obligations that were incurred before February 15th, and uh, or refinancing an SBA economic injury disaster loan made between January 21st and April 3rd. So a lot of different things, but I think the key point and why I have it highlighted in yellow on this deck, on the slide is, you wanna make sure that at least 75% of those expenditures from that loan are made on payroll or payroll expenses because that's what's gonna get you to, the, to that forgiveness number, that and your full-time headcount. So that's the, the high level. Three other things I wanna mention on this program. Number one, this is not a credit decision. SBA, or I'm sorry, the lender that you are going through will not pull your credit report. It is solely based on the documentation that you provide regarding prior year payroll. So huge, huge point there. Number two, there is no collateral requirement. So you do not have to um, give any collateral on this loan. And number three, there is no personal guarantee on this loan. So typically if you take out a loan with the SBA, we ask you to make a personal guarantee, basically guaranteeing your, or offering your personal assets to cover a loan in the event of default. That is not the case in this loan program. Uh, just kind of from a process standpoint, what you're gonna do as a, as a potential borrower or participant in the PPP program is you're going to, number one, identify your lender. That could be your existing commercial banker that you work with. It could be another entity that you find through the uh, Paycheck Protection Program Lender Finder on SBA's website. You're going to go through the application process with them. They will pull together their documents as well. They have a document they need to provide to SBA and go through the system to uh, get loan approval. Once the loan is approved, then they are free to disperse the loan, close the loan with you and disperse. All this stuff happens pretty fast. The SBA part of it, getting approval from the SBA for the loan is usually gonna be a within 24 hour type of thing. And then, uh, my understanding is that we're trying to, we're asking the lenders to make at least initial disbursement within five days after that. So the intent is to get the dollars out to you very quickly. Fast forward at least seven weeks, at which point you and the bank will have conversations about, okay, let's talk about what you use those proceeds for, provide evidence, and then, you know, at that point, then the lender will go and ask the SBA for forgiveness. What happens then is the, once the SBA approves that, the treasury will pay off that loan on your behalf. So that's kind of the whole cycle for how it goes. Now, if the entirety of the loan is not forgiven, then that portion that is not forgiven will, will remain as a loan with that two-year term at 1% interest. So a pretty amazing program. It's a great way for you to not only take care of your business, but also take care of your employees. All right, next, touch on SBA debt relief. This is another huge program for small businesses. This one applies to those who are 7A lenders, or I'm sorry, those who have currently have 7A loans, which is more conventional loan program where SBA guarantees your loan with a private lender and new SBA loans issued prior to September 27th. What's gonna happen is the federal government, basically the, 
via the SBA, the treasury is going to pay interest and principal on your 7A loan for a period of six months. So if you were, if you already have an SBA loan and uh, your payment is now, instead of you paying that loan, the lender is going to pay that loan. As a borrower, this should be transparent to you. The lenders are supposed to be working with the SBA to make all this ha magic happen. Uh, key thing here just to note is if you make payment after March 27th for a loan that is part of this debt relief program, then the lender should come back to you and say, hey, we got your payment. Do you want us to return it? Or would you like us to apply it to the principal? So again, it's a huge way for businesses who have 7A loans to get some breathing room from a working capital perspective, from a debt service perspective, so that, um, and not only is it, a def it's more than a deferment, right? You're actually having your principal and interest paid for you for that six month period. Last thing I'm gonna talk to you today is the Express Bridge Loan Program. Now this is part of our, it's, it's a, kind of a pilot off of our normal 7A loan program. And it allows you as a small business owner who currently has a business relationship with an SBA Express lender to access up to $25,000 with less paperwork. So it's a, a quick turnaround loan program. It's up to $25,000. Loan can be repaid in part, in full or in part from proceeds from an economic injury disaster loan seven-year maturity, 50% guarantee, interest rates determined in discussion between you and your lender, uh, no collateral requirement, and we do charge SBA guarantee fees on this program. There are no guarantee fees on the PPP, by the way. Last thing I wanna to touch on is assistance from SBA and our partners. SBA funds a network of partners across the country. These are small business development centers, which hire full-time employees to provide one-on-one -on -one business counseling and advising. Their SCORE, which is all-volunteer organization with expertise across a range of functions and or industries. Women's business centers, obviously focused on women's, women business owners and vet, veteran business outreach centers. They are all there to help you navigate these various programs as well as as you develop your strategy to get through the next two weeks, the next two months, as you face the challenges that COVID-19 presents to you, they are a tremendous resource. Most of them are working virtually right now, but they're still working. They're available to help you. For the nearest office, you can definitely visit SBA's website at sba.gov forward slash local, uh, local hyphen assistance. Um, and we'll try and put these in the, in the chat. Um, so that, so that you can get uh, to that resource locally. All else fails, you can always reach out to your local district office for the SBA. I'm in Illinois, but there are uh, district offices across the country that serve your particular area. You can reach out to them and they can get you to a resource partner. Last slide, and uh, this is important stuff. The, Latest and greatest on SBA's programs and services can be found at sba.gov forward slash coronavirus. If you are interested in the disaster program and information on that, you can go to sba.gov forward slash disaster. And uh, if you do have questions, you applied for the EIDL loan or the EIDL advance, you can definitely get information at our customer service center at 800-659-2955. So with that, uh, I went through that really quickly, I know, but I'll hand it back off to Anson and uh, we can go through Q&A and just talk through some of the things that you have and some of the things that you're trying to understand about these programs. So thanks, Anson. Thanks, Robert. That was really, really informative. I really appreciate it. So we're right on time, 11.31, so we have around 20 minutes around for Q&A. So I think a lot of people are asking so actually to the timeline questions. So in terms of the timeline, I know you talked a little bit about sometimes you have worked the bank, but um, one thing we didn't really talk about is the uh, EDIL. Um, the, the, and, and can you comment on the timeline? I think a lot of us already applied. Um, how long is the wait right now for, for something like that? What can we expect? Sure. 
So as, as you all can imagine, uh, the volume of application on the EIDL program was probably, uh, so for perspective, normally when we have a disaster loan program, it's focused on a physical disaster that happens in one place. Even when it's a big disaster like the hurricanes, we had those three hurricanes, big disaster, but still fairly localized. This was a national disaster that affected the entire United States. So every state, every territory was declared. So I say that just to give perspective on as we went through the process, uh, we, you know, we did build up some backlog on processing the EIDL loans. My understanding is that in the next few days, they should be getting, beginning to disperse on those loans from the standpoint of the economic injury disaster loan. Now, from the standpoint of the advance, which is part of the CARES Act, which offers up to $10,000, and just for kind of full transparency, the amount of the advance that you may be approved for is dependent upon the number of employees that you have on staff. So if you're a sole proprietor, that's one employee, that's $1,000. Two employees, $2,000, so on and so forth. So just you know, trying to be completely clear on that. Um, the, uh, so that, my understanding as well, is that they're getting ready to launch payment on those EIDL advance loans as well. Uh, for those of you that have been in the system, systems, you'll note that we had an initial system that was um, an online application. It was struggling a little bit to manage with the whole, the, the volume of uh, applicants. And we moved to a new portal that's really streamlined, has been really well received by most people that have used it. To apply for the advance, you did have to go through that new portal. Um, or new applicants would go through that new portal. But I think the key there is uh, if you went through the new portal, which opened up a week ago Monday, so that was something like the 30th of May, I want to say, you could apply for both the economic injury disaster loan and the advance at the same time. And again, my understanding is that those disbursements from the advance should be coming soon. Got it, got it. And can somebody apply both PPP and the idea, was there any limitation to how many you can apply for? Sure, so, so you can apply for both and you can uh, receive both. The key uh, distinction here is that you cannot use the proceeds from both loans for the same thing. So if you receive an EIDL and it's for, let's say you're using it for your rent or other working capital needs, but you're not using it for payroll and you use the PPP for payroll exclusively, then that's appropriate. If, however, you apply for the EIDL and you're gonna use it for payroll, then if you get the PPP, the expectation would be that you would roll that loan, that economic injury disaster loan, you refinance that into the PPP because you're using it for that same purpose. So yeah. that's that's how the, um, the interim final rule lays it out. Uh, there's a million use cases I can imagine that might come up, but that's generally how, our, how we're uh, approaching it. Got it. And there's some people also asking in terms of qualification for the PPP, uh, 501c, 501c6, 501c4, um, any limitation there, maybe we can talk about that. Yeah, so the, the, uh, the final rule lays, points out specifically 501c3 and 501c19. And that other uh, other structures are not eligible to participate. Got it, got it. And then the, in terms of uh, working with the bank, um, do you recommend us? Do you have uh, any advice on what bank to choose from? Or because it's you know it's a little messy right now, right? So so how how can somebody decide which bank to go for? So. Uh, Again, I think you know the the first step. I I think that most business owners probably would think about is going to their existing bank of record. Um, you know, because I think um, number one, you know them; they know you, uh, and I think you know they're they're there to to help. If you don't have a bank that's supporting the program, then that's where you could go to the uh, Paycheck Protection Program Lender Finder. 
to find a, a lender that is participating. And as I mentioned, uh, initially it was primarily SBA 7A lenders who were participating, but that that landscape's expanding rapidly. So, uh, so you have a wide range of different types of lenders, both bank and non-bank, that you can go to 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 participate. So, it may take a little look, uh, looking to find those lenders. Um, what I would recommend is that if you are having difficulty finding a lender, is reach out to your local small business development center. They keep their finger on the pulse of what's going on in the lending community locally, and I, I, I believe they would be a good resource to help navigate that process. Got it, got it, very helpful. Um, some of the specific questions is, for the PPP you mentioned, you need to make payroll prior, by February of this year or last year? So basically the criteria is that um, there's a line as of February 15th of this year. So okay. it, it really opens it up for businesses that even, you know, you could have started January 1. If you're in it's business still, as of January 1, you're still eligible. I see. And for the qualifying um, expenditure, does, you talk about utilities, right? So what kind of utility? Is it just electricity, like the basic utilities, or how do you how define that? The, uh, so I'm just, I can just reference the rule and it's just says utilities. So, I see. you know, that's um, going to be kind of dependent upon using good judgment on, as a business owner, on what you perceive to be utilities. What Sorry. about pay, what about payroll taxes? So yeah, so uh, payroll taxes, state and local payroll taxes can be included in the uh, payroll expense calculations. Uh, my understanding is also the employee portion of payroll taxes. So you know you've got the pay, the employee portion, the employer portion. The employee portion can also be included in those payroll expenses. It's just the, uh, from a federal perspective, the employer responsibility for payroll taxes can't be included in those uh, calculations. Got it. And some of us are sole proprietary, right? So we have only one person business. So how do we, when we apply for PPP, you talk about a 75% payroll. Um, how do we calculate that when you're the only person in your organization? Um, we don't really have a good um, a good guidance on that at this point. Um, I expect more to come out because the lenders are gonna want it to help make sure that they're doing the right thing. Uh, what, I would, what I would suggest is just maintaining all your records, you know, your bank statements, stuff like that to document, um, you know, the, basically what you're, what you're using the money for but again you know the intent of the PPP is to basically help small businesses and you as a self-employed sole proprietor 1099 be able to have income during the time of this uh, this crisis got it got it that's really helpful and if for the PPP program once we got the fund we're asking for forgiveness is that the applicant responsibility to contact SBA or would you contact the lender? Like what do we need to do for that, for that part? Yeah, for everything that you do for this loan, you're going to work through your lender. I see. You're not going to work directly with the SBA. So, uh, so what I would recommend is just staying in touch with your lender that you're working with and, um, and, trying to, and making sure that there's open lines of communication. On the front end, I think it's always good to just talk to the lender about like, okay, what documentation do you need? Um, what are you going to need on the back end? So when we go to apply for forgiveness, what do you need then as well? So that, you know, really just so that you're both on the same page and you can just make sure that you're, you as the, either an individual or a business who've applied for the program or taking advantage of it can, uh, collect the data that they need in order to go through the process. Got it. And I don't, I don't know if you have heard, um, I have seen something online that are calling out some scams related to these kind of programs that are created by third parties. Have you heard anything like that or anything we should look out for? 
Boy, uh, I have heard that there's people trying to take advantage of this situation for sure. Um, I don't have any specific examples that I can share uh, or that I'm aware of. I've just heard kind of rumor of it. Um, I think the key thing that you're going to want to do is just make sure that if, for example, you find somebody who's going to support the program and it's an online type of entity is trying to validate that that is in fact a legitimate um, lender. And I don't have a good way for you to do that right now, which stinks. Um, but you just need to be careful for sure, because you know, you're still going to have to provide all that sensitive information, your social security number, your birthday, all that stuff, which uh, none of us want to give out to some fraudster. Got it, got it. And I want to open up to everybody else in the green room too. If you guys have any questions, feel free to jump in as well. I know we, we, we're kind of going through a lot of the questions here and, and Rob has been fantastic <laughs> buying them out like, like nothing here. So um, any, anybody have any, any questions so far? Yeah, I got a text from someone. I won't call out the name. Could you double check on uh, the payroll taxes for employee that's, uh, that's covered, uh, Bo? So, so on payroll uh, taxes. Yeah, so that is, uh, the Department of Treasury put out an FAQ yesterday that okay. specified uh, what could be included. Um, hold on a second. Or you could send it to me and I'll, I'll get it into to everyone. Yeah, no, that'd be great. Um, that'd be great. I, you know, again, I'm, I'm speaking very generally. Uh, you're going to want to review all the documentation that's on our website to get the, the, you know, constantly check it because we, we're constantly clarifying different aspects of the rule and different parts of it. So, um, so that's what I would say. Okay, great. I'll make sure I get that uh, website and send it out to everyone. Thank you. Sure. Yep. yep. Absolutely. Um, just some clarifications um, for both the PPP and the EIDL. Um, how, how is number of employees impacting you, the final amount, the loan amount? Is it really just one for one thousand dollars, or is it more complicated than that? Uh, you mean for the economic injury disaster loan advance? Yeah. Component. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, that's my understanding is it's a th basically, it's a pretty simple calculation of $1,000 per full-time employee. Got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, I don't, I, I don't, it's not written on our website right now. That's just my understanding. Because from the, from the, uh, the, yeah, the, outlook, it, the application is super simple. It's very, very streamlined right now. Would it easy to apply? Would there be a mm -hmm. follow-up after that or ap after you applied, do you need to do anything else? For the, for the loan application. You shouldn't. Uh, if, if, the, if the loan processor needs anything else, they should reach out to you directly to ask for more information. Got it, got it. Let's see what else on the chat here, guys. Um, feel free to post anything here. So we have one question. If a business owner apply for unemployment insurance before learning about CARES Act or PPP, are they excluded from applying and receiving PPP? Can you say that question again? I'm sorry, I missed the first part. So the business owner apply for unemployment insurance before learning about the CARES Act, are they excluded? I can't answer that question. Um, we don't have any specific guidance related to unemployment versus PPP. Right, got it. Um, is being a landlord equal to sole proprietary? And if you don't pay yourself, I think we asked that already, kind of. So you can you can still apply as a sole proprietor, right? You can. Um, you know, you basically the the thing is, you know, like what you need to look at is the basis for your loan is based on your compensation or payroll and other expenses, right? So you have to have payroll and or other expenses in order to have a basis for that aspect of the PPP. Right. Right. So what else we're asking? 501c3 is qualified for the DL, DIDL. I think we talked about that. Yep. If a uh, oh the PPP forgiveness qualified uh, expenditure does it does it also account for 1099 employees contractors? They do not. So okay. the the PPP for both calculation of the loan amount 
and for calculation of the 75% um, for forgiveness is based on uh, formal employees, not 1099s, because 1099s can apply on their own. Got it. Got it. On their own behalf. Right, right. Um, can independent contractors submit the application today, even though the guidelines is April 10th? Uh, I think this question is for, for PPP then. So I can't, uh, basically the, the way the program reads is that application, uh, applicants can begin applying on April 10th. What your individual lender does, if they take your application now and then, and then process it on April 10th, um, that's gonna be between you and the lender. So you should reach out to your lender that you plan to use on that front. Right. For PPP, you're working with the bank, you're working with your lender directly, not with SBA. Correct. Great. Um, would you would you would you make this PPT uh, available for downloads, or should we go to the website for information if there are further questions? Yeah, the best place to go for the latest and greatest, and and why we um, we haven't been sending out the 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 slide decks is that you know things have been moving really quickly. This is a huge program that we're implementing, so the best place to go is www.sba.gov forward slash coronavirus. Got it. So I think that kind of concludes the Q&A sessions. Um, thank you so much, Robert, for spending the time. I know you have a popular man right now, so I, I, we won't keep you for long, but uh, really appreciate your help and also your time with us here. Yeah, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. This is, uh, you know, I appreciate all the questions. I know this is a challenging time for everybody and, and um, you know, we continue to work hard to provide you with the information you need, so. Um, you know, as, as you go forward, your district office is definitely a resource for you, and you can find that at sba.gov. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Bo. We'll, uh, we'll continue to have the conversation on how we could do more. And Anson, you're not close it out, uh, but we could stay on, uh, both Chilling and I could stay on until um, noontime, Chicago time, to answer questions you might have on this program or what we're trying to do moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys for joining. Um, so we'll have this again in two weeks uh, with new information. So stay tuned. Um, thank you so much for our panelists. We will see you guys again in two weeks. Okay. So uh, thank you, Ensign. Uh, I know it's tough. I couldn't keep up with the uh, the, the chat room, but uh, we'll, we'll attempt to take a look at the chat questions, okay. summarize it, and see if we could um, compare that to uh, the, uh, the slide deck and make sure we give everyone on the list all the link that we refer to, including, if you don't know already, the SBA hotline, SBA uh, website. But so I just want to share with everyone uh, what our plans are moving forward from the Asian American executive perspective. Uh, I'm happy to report that uh, we have about 30 volunteers and we're in the process of structuring the team so that we could provide more structured approach to support the, uh, the effort. Uh, the, the few things that I mentioned earlier are in progress and uh, we do have a website that I'll send you in a second so that you can uh, join as a volunteer plus you as a small business owner can uh, submit a request uh, for us to take an additional look at your situation. Initially, it was intended to be a local uh, kind of Chicago land type thing, but uh, I welcome anybody on the call want to join in and uh, put your name in. And I don't think I have the capacity beyond Chicago, most volunteer of Chicago, but I'll, uh, I'll include my friend, uh, Chilling Tong, who has a MOU partner across the country. So perhaps we could get you some additional uh, guidance through uh, the uh, MOU partner from the National ACE. But just very quickly, I wanna to explain to you what we're trying to do with the seminar that's been set. Uh, we, have three more, we have three more coming up, uh, one every two weeks. Uh, the intent is to provide SBA, the platform to continue to provide information uh, but if things are moving too fast, you might not be able to wait for the two weeks from now for SBA information, but we'll make sure that that information get to you. The intent is also to 
and additional federal government uh, agency who could share their, um, their programs with you or with the small business owner. And have requests from uh, GSA, EEOC, FEMA to join this program. This program is intent to be national level information uh, Anson and I were working through to see some local webinar for the Illinois Chicagoland area, but I encourage um, uh, you to talk to your local chamber to see if they could have additional program. And I'll be uh, working with Chile and see if we could take this model and encourage uh, her MOU partner to use similar tactics if they haven't done it already. But I do know that a lot of them are doing a lot of good things to help the local uh, members. With that, uh, Chilene, you want to uh, have a few? I know this you're still here. Yeah, well, yes, I'm here. Yes, I want to thank uh, Mrs. Steiner's uh, presentation. It is very, very helpful and give everybody an uh, overall picture. And uh, uh, for uh, next week, we're going to have a uh, uh, SBA uh, business specialist, uh, Man Li Ling, to help us to go over the application. So next Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern time, we're going to send an invitation to everybody and she will go over the application of PPP and the application of the uh, disaster uh, uh, loan to uh, tell you how to fill each column, which is very, very practical. So we'll send you the invitation for that. Uh, I encourage people to apply as soon as possible, especially for PPP. It is uh, um, first come, first serve. So, uh, but at this time, we are still working on the Capitol Hill. We wish we can get more funding for small business uh, in, do in order to, uh, you know, uh, to face uh, this kind of challenging times. And thank you again. Uh, welcome to uh, visit our website, www.nationalace.org or, or www.acesmallbusiness.org. Uh, if you are interested in uh, Korean or Vietnamese or Chinese, uh, please let us know and uh, we'll be happy to connect you uh, with those webinars. Thank you, yeah, George. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, Rich bring, bring back. We have a great conversation with Men Lee uh, Lin yesterday, who's the SBA officer in New York. She uh, put together a long list of webinars. I think she's doing one almost every week and they are done in currently scheduled in Chinese. And uh, Ms. Tong and ACE is looking to provide additional language support. Uh, Korean and Vietnamese is on the program. But we are working with a uh, volunteer organization to see if we could get additional languages so that we could um, have translator if needed. Uh, on these webinar for different languages. So uh, right now, because uh, I am a volunteer organization. We have folks who are willing to help with Lao uh, languages, but we're looking for more volunteer. I think it's good to uh, to have the official English version from the official uh, uh, SB official. But it's always good if we could find a uh, translator interpreter to uh, further explain the finer detail to this webinar. And um, with that, uh, I think we're going to close. Uh, the event would like to get on time. I know Chilling has another conference call in two minutes. So um, I'm going to hold for maybe one more minute, see if you have any last minute um, question. I think some people are asking if where they can get the link to uh, these, these uh, webinars that are in Chinese language or Korean language or I will send it. I promise. I have the list that I'm putting together and I have all your email. Uh, I'll send you a summary email. We have in Chicago, Asian American have put together a fact sheet which has a lot of links that uh, Bo talked about and uh, including the a National Age link. So uh, we'll try to keep that up to date um, and uh, send it to everyone. So uh, and the Asian American Exam Network uh, mailing list uh, is a, ma a manage and you can uns unsubscribe from it definitely uh, if you choose to but we were sending uh, this information to you as soon as it changes okay absolutely okay sounds good so we, uh, thank you to all that was the last chat you're most welcome and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you on uh, 
I believe April 22nd, uh, we are scheduling our SBA and we are also looking at to uh, add additional, again, national level federal agency on this hour block. So uh, you are welcome to sign up again for the next one and I'm sure it will change. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna sign That's off. One thing sure. Yeah. Thank you very much for your participation. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for your patience.